Let's look at that fourth example, where we go now to two-dimensional interpolation. And here I'll use the interp2d, which is uh, sort of similarly named to the interp1d, that specifically does 2D interpolation, but with a slight twist at the end. Uh, if I'll just run this example, and then we'll explore it and see what it's doing. I'm actually generating uh, a figure as well as another surface graph with the uh, nthought.myavi toolkit. There's an MLAB interface to that, uh, to Myavi, that allows you to produce three dimensional visualizations that we'll look at in a, just a moment. But first, you can see I've interpolated a two dimensional function. And here's the two-dimensional function. It's a Gaussian-like function with a, with a multiplier out front to give it some feet, some flavor and a little more color, basically the derivative uh, of a, uh, one of some of the partial derivatives of a Gaussian function. And I'm evaluating this Gaussian function uh, on a grid from negative 1 to 1 at 15 data points. So 15 times 15, 125 different data points inside the uh, region of interest. I'm evaluating this function. And then taking those data points, the x values, the y values, and then the function values themselves, the third argument, and passing all of that to interpolate.interp2d. And then giving it a kind equals cubic. The kinds uh, available for interp2d are less than the kinds available for interp1d, but cubic is available and linear is available. Uh, linear and cubic are the two most common uh, anyway, and so those are available for interp1d, or interp2d, excuse me. and you get this new function. That new function can then be evaluated at new data points. However, in this, this interface for interp2d, which currently I consider to be a bug, uh, however, it uh, requires that the new inputs are 1D arrays. We have here that the x values are evaluated on a 1D array from negative 1 to 1, and the y values are exactly the same, another 1D array from negative 1 to 1. 100 data points now. And this new function returned from the interp2d uh, class is callable, and it will construct a 2D result. So it, gives, it takes 1D inputs and constructs a 2D result on the cross product of the, of the data. And I'm just going to show that in, uh, with these three lines of, from matplotlib pi using imshow from that package, and show that uh, as fnu. And you can see it does a nice job interpolating onto a, ni onto a smooth 100 by 100 grid so that you can see the data. And then I'm also going to call from MLAB, uh, MLAB.surf, and pass to it a fully fleshed out grid. It can't take x nu and y nu, which are only 1D arrays. It needs two 2D arrays, x2 and y2. And so I call mgrid from the NumPy package, which returns to me a mesh grid to evaluate the function on. And, and the MLAB surf method does need that fully fleshed out two-dimensional array. And needs two of them, and when I pl when I plot that, it shows up as a Myavi scene, which is an interactive scene that I can uh, play with, and it's built on top of VTK, and so has interactors that are similar to VTK. I'm using the mouse button to to scroll this around. If I click Shift, I can then move, and then move the mouse. I can shift around, and if I use the second, the right mouse button, I can move, zoom in and out on this graph. And so this gives me a three-dimensional view of my function, my surface, that I can uh, explore with. And you can see it's nicely interpolated, even though I started with only uh, 15 by 15 grid of data. Um, the interpolation function allows me to explore it as if it were a higher, higher set of data that I had originally acquired. So that's interpolation in 2D with interp2D. I can also do interpolation in two dimensions with the radial basis functions. And these, uh, the interface is exactly the same as the 1D case, except I, I pass in, instead of two parameters to the RBF class, I pass in the X values, the Y values, and F values. So three arguments, and then the keyword argument to describe which function I want, which radial basis function I want to use in the interpolation. So in this uh, approach, I'm going to take scattered data instead of gridded data. I'm going to take scattered data, X and Y, and uh, the function that it's going to evaluate is this uh, Gaussian-like function again. And I'm going to create those, I'm going to evaluate that function on just this 50 by 50 point. And this should be a set of scattered points or in the, in the 2D grid from negative 1 to 1. Create a new function from those scattered points using interpolate.rbf, as shown here. 
And then I'm going to evaluate that new function on a tighter grid, 100 data points between negative 1 and 1, and then show that uh, new function. And then I'm also going to create the true value here that I could refer to later. And then just create an image plot that shows that new data. And here I'm going to also use the scatter plot function of matplotlib just to show those original data points, where they were, uh, so that you can compare uh, how the fnu was constructed, where it got its information from and then create a surface plot just as I did before. So that's example five. If I run this example, you can see these little circles show up as the scatter points. These are the points at which I originally had the data, uh, for the fval data, from which I interpolated a curve. Uh, and you can see that the interpolation is a pretty good job, even with the scattered data uh, randomly sampled throughout the space. There's only 50 data points, remember. So this is 50 total data points in the entire 2D grid, and from those 50 data points I was able to reconstruct 100 by 100 points, uh, or 10,000 points, using uh, fnu. So you can see what those data points are. There's the xy points, the x-coordinates, and the y-coordinates of the data points, and then the f-value of the data points that were evaluated from that function. And then fnu, if we look at its shape, it's 100 by 100. So, I, for, so using the radial basis functions I interpolated this from a 50 length array to a two-dimensional 100 by 100, 100 shape two-dimensional array. Now clearly this is a great candidate for radial basis functions of a multi-quadric nature because of the Gaussian nature of the curve. Your mileage may vary depending on exactly what curve it is, but the radial basis functions are a good choice to try to interpolate uh, your data. And you can even try to use the third argument, the smoothing argument, the smooth parameter to try to make do some curve fitting as well. But curve fitting is really a topic for another podcast or another screencast.